Antichrist at the helm of the beast system is given a time factor to do their evil deeds. As we will see, this is not referring somewhere out in the future when some one-man super antichrist comes along as taught by the secret pre-tribulation rapture folks. These prophecies of our God have already been fulfilled in history. Prophecy is not so we can predict everything in the future like some would like you to believe. Instead, prophecy is given so that we can see the hand of Almighty God at work in history. We can see how His Word came true to the letter, and then we can raise our voices in praise and declare, What a God we have! Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So let's look at the time the beast was given to reign supreme. In the prophetic book of Daniel, we are told the fourth beast would arise. And upon the ten-horned kingdom, another horn shall arise, which is different from the rest. He will speak with great blasphemies, tread upon the saints of God, and he will have until a time and times and the dividing of a time to work against the saints of the Most High God. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of a time. Revelation chapter 11 restates this time allowance. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread under foot forty and two months. Verse 2 states the city will be tread upon for 42 months. This is the same time period as the times, times, and a dividing of a time in Daniel 7. Let me explain. During this time period, the lunar calendar was in use. There were 30 days to a month and 360 days to a year. One time, or one year, is equal to 360 days. Times is equal to 360 days times 2, or 720. A dividing of a time is 360 days divided by 2, or 180. If we simply add a time, 360, plus times, 720, and a dividing of a time, 180, we get 1,260 prophetic days. Now how does this add up to 42 months? Well, we already established that each month has 30 days, according to the lunar calendar. If we simply multiply the 30 days by 42 months, we get 1,260 prophetic days. Now, God really wanted us to know this time period the beast or Antichrist would run rampant over his church. So let's look quickly at another verse. And she brought forth a male child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. One thousand two hundred and threescore, or one thousand two hundred and sixty prophetic days, was the amount of time God's true church would have to seek refuge. In Bible prophecy, God has allotted one day for each year. This is established in Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6 and Numbers chapter 14 verse 34. So this 1,260 prophetic day time period is actually 1,260 years. The child in the above verse signifies the seed of true Christianity. The woman, covenant people Israel, did not actually flee into the wilderness, but went into hiding to keep herself pure from the Antichrist and false teachings. Now let us look at the time period identified in the three statements. Until a time, times, and a dividing of a time, 42 months, and 1,260 days. They all represent 1,260 years. Before we go any further, I believe God fulfills a plurality of time prophecy periods, and He does not just limit Himself to one. I also believe each fulfillment of a time prophecy is weighed on a sliding scale of importance. Why does he do this? So we get it to sink in. 
Okay, let's take a look at them. From the decree of Justinian that the Pope was head of all the churches in 529 AD, 1,260 years were accomplished in 1789 when the French Revolution broke out. The French people turned on Rome and they burned the churches and killed the system. This time prophecy was fulfilled again in 538 AD when the Goths were driven from the city of Rome and the Pope was declared universal bishop. Exactly 1,260 years later, in 1798, the French general Berthier captured the Pope of Rome. The general bound the Pope in irons and led him into captivity where the Pope later died. And fulfillment for a third time, just as scriptures gave it to us, in 606 AD, the Roman Emperor Phocas proclaimed the Pope to be universal bishop and head of the Roman Church. If we add 1,260 years to 606 AD, we come to the year 1866 AD. In 1866 AD, the last two Protestants were burned alive at the stake for the Reformed faith. They were burned in a town of Barletta in Italy upon the Pope's own orders. The three specific time prophecies of 1,260 years, 42 months, a time, times, and a dividing of time had run their cycle. And just as Revelation chapter 13 verse 12 details, the beast received a mortal wound, yet survived. In 1870 AD, four years after the last two Christian Protestants were martyred, the papacy received another mortal wound. The armies of United Italy broke down the walls of Rome with cannon fire. Now this is not really that long ago. The Pope fled into his palace to become the prisoner of the Vatican. Before the Italian soldiers liberated Rome, you know what went through the gates first? A little dog called Pius in mockery of the Pope. Puppy Pius was dragging a little cart full of Italian Bibles from the Italian Bible Society. God had a sense of humor and he began to bring the system a wicked and persecuting system, down to ruin. Time, times, and a dividing of a time, right on time. 